In this video, we're going to find the inverse of plus of this expression here. So this looks like we're going to use partial fractions. It looks pretty complicated. So let's go ahead and write it over here and try to use partial fractions. So we have 4s minus 8 over, you notice you can pull out a 4 too. Um, I didn't do that, but so I don't think it's necessary. Here you can pull out an s, so we have s, s plus 1, and then here we have s squared plus 1. Good stuff. So when you use partial fractions, if it's linear, you just put like a constant, like an a. And if it's a quadratic, you have to have like a s plus b. So here it's s, so it's just a over s plus. Here it's s plus 1, so it's b over s plus 1. And then here it's s squared plus 1, so you have to have cs plus d. Remember, whenever it's a quadratic, you have to have that, like the ax plus b, except here it's not x. It's S. So the next step in partial fraction decomposition is to eliminate the fractions. So what you do is you multiply both sides by whatever is here on the bottom. So it's S, S plus 1, S squared plus 1. We do the same thing over here, okay? So we have S, S plus 1, S squared plus 1. So this cancels over here. All of these cancel. So you're left with 4S minus 8 equals... And let's see, we have all of this times this. So it looks like the S will cancel. So we're left with A, S plus 1, and then S squared plus 1. Yep, looks good. Plus B. And then we cancel the S plus 1. So we have S, S squared plus 1. So S, S squared plus 1. And then we cancel these. So we have CS plus D. And then it looks like we have s, s plus 1. Yikes, let me check that because I did that really, really quick. So we have this times this. So the s is canceled, so we're left with this and this. Yep, it looks okay. We have this times this. s plus 1's canceled, we're left with this and this. Yep, looks okay. We have this times this. The quadratic cancels, we're left with s, s plus 1. We're okay. So the next step in partial fraction decomposition is to ask yourself, is there anything I can plug in that will make things go away? In other words, is there anything you can plug in that will immediately give you one of the variables? Well, there's two numbers that will do that. Zero, because it'll make the, all of this will go away, and you'll get A. And also negative one, because this will go away, and this will go away, and you'll get B. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's plug in what we can to get some answers. So s equals 0. Let's do that one first. So plugging in 0 for s, we're going to get 0 minus 8. So we just get minus 8. And then plugging 0 for s, this is 0 and this is 0. So it's going to be a. Okay, so a. And, oh, this goes away at 0. This goes away at 0. Oh, look at that. That's a. So that, that, that's... That's an accomplishment. <laughs> that was pretty cool. I mean, I guess I knew it would happen, but I, you know, I, I wasn't really thinking about it that much. I just knew stuff would go away, and yeah, it goes away, and it worked out really nice. Let's do negative one now. It's always fun when um, things work out nice. So plugging in negative one here, we get negative four minus eight, so that's gonna be negative 12. Uh, this will go away, because the whole thing is zero, right? Negative one plus one is zero. The whole thing vanishes. This goes away too. So we just get b, negative 1, and then negative 1 squared is 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2. So you get negative 2b. So that means b is equal to 6. So b is equal to 6. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be cheap. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put a 6 here. I'm going to do this, and I put a negative 8 here. All right, so now there's nothing else we can plug in that will immediately, immediately give us an answer. So you could plug in like 17 and 20, not a good idea, and you would get two equations with two unknown variables, namely C and D, and then you could solve them. So that's, that's a thing. You can always just plug in numbers and get equations. But always try to do this first. So now when you get to the point where you can't do this anymore, now is when you go to the method of what's called equating coefficients. So we're going to look at the highest degree terms. I think those are going to be s cubed terms, see? So let's look at the s cubed terms. So on the left hand side, we're looking for the coefficient of s cubed. Well, there is no s cubed there. So the coefficient of s cubed is zero. There's really a zero s cubed there. So it's just zero, right? Because it's, it's really there, but it's not. So 
The coefficient of s would be 4, and the constant would be negative 8. But the coefficient of s cubed, or s squared, or s to the 20th power, they're not there, so they're just 0. So now we need to figure out how to get s cubed from all of this. And so the way it works is, in order to multiply stuff, you have to pick one from each parentheses. So we have to take the negative 8, and can we get an s cubed here? We can, right? Negative 8s cubed. So pick the s, pick the s squared. So pick one, pick one, pick one. So negative 8s cubed gives us negative 8. What about here? Oh, yep, we can. Plus 6s cubed. So plus 6. And what about here? Let's see, can we use the c? Yes, yes we can. We can take the c, take the s, take the s. So plus c. So this one, this one, and this one gives us c. Can we use the d? d s squared. Nope, fails. So we have, I'm going to use an implication arrow here, uh, 0 equals negative 2 plus c. So c is equal to 2. That gives us c equals 2. Okay, so now we're just going to go down the line. Let's go to s squared terms. So s squared terms this is a harder problem. So again, on the left-hand side, there is no s squared, so I'm just going to put it there to show you the coefficient is 0. Over here, let's see, we have to pick the negative 8. Can we use the s to get an s squared? No, we can't, because if I pick the s, I have to pick one of these. This will give me a cube, this will give me an s, so no good. I think we can use the 1. Negative 8 times 1 times s squared. Yep, negative 8 s squared. That'll work. What about here? Uh, I don't think we can get an s squared here, because you have to take the 6 and the s, and there's no way to get an s squared, because you, you would get a cubed or just an s. What about here? Can we use the c? Let's see. c, s, squared, and the 1. See that? That's really clever. c, s, squared. So plus c. Oh, we know what c is. c is 2. I'll put the c, but c is 2. So this is a 2. So c, s, squared. Now can we use the d? I think we can. Check it out. Look. d, s, squared. So c is 2. So you get 0 equals negative 8 plus 2 plus d. So that means we have 0 equals negative 6 plus d. So that means that d is equal to 6. Boom. We have all of them. Now we're just going to plug them in and figure out this monstrous problem. Okay, so I'm going to erase this and, and just plug everything in. This is exciting. Um, so we have a, so inverse Laplace. So what is a? a is negative 8. That's going to be easy. So negative 8 over s. Let's go ahead and write it out. Uh, when you find the inverse of plus of 1 over s, you're just going to get 1. So it's good to talk about it. Uh, b is 6, so it'll be plus 6 over s plus 1. That's going to be an exponential. So remember, if it's 1 over s minus a, it gives you e to the at. So it's s minus negative 1. This is going to give us an e to the negative t. Uh, c, c is 2, so plus 2c, and then d is 6. Ooh, this is harder. Oh, sorry, sorry. So c is c is 2. So 2s plus 6. Yeah, because c is 2 and d is 6. Well, this is no joke, and this is s squared plus 1. Mm-hmm. So we are here. Okay, so now we have to carefully, carefully, carefully break everything up. So everything looks okay. Our c is 2, our d is s. Let's finish this thing. So now... We'll break it up into four pieces. So I'll pull out the negative 8. So we have inverse Laplace of 1 over s. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and erase the rest of the board. Keep it clean. Uh, pull out the 6 here. So plus 6. Inverse Laplace, 1 over s plus 1. Kind of a fun problem. I'm going to break this up into two different Laplace transforms. It's 2s over this. So I'll pull out the 2. And then we have s over s squared plus 1. Pull out the 6, inverse Laplace. What a nice problem. I think this is a really good example of like partial fractions because you have the linear terms and you have the quadratic terms and you have plugging in numbers and you have equating coefficients. It's, it's like the ultimate problem. So I just broke it up this over this and then this over this. I just pulled out the 6 and the 2. Okay, this is 1 over s from the formulas. So oh, it's just 1 rather. So this is just 1. This is 1. Uh, this one is uh, e to the negative t. That's a formula. Write the inverse Laplace. I'll write it. Inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus a uh, is e to the at. And again, the inverse Laplace of 1 over s is just 1. It's a formula. This one uh, is a cosine. This is 2 
cosine t. How do I know that? Cosine has the s. The inverse Laplace of s over s squared plus k squared is equal to cosine kt. Just memorize it as cosine has the s and you'll get it every time. Plus six. And this one is a sine, sine has the k. So if I put a k here, this becomes sine kt. So k is one. So this is a six sine t. And that, my friends, is the inverse Laplace transform. This problem was tough. This is harder than some of the differential equations that we solve. Uh, definitely uh, a little bit more challenging than some of the other problems. I hope this video has made sense and hopefully it's helped. So take care.